To God be the glory. Amen. 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 3 and 4. Praise be to God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of compassion and the God of all comfort, who comforts us in our trouble so that we can comfort those in any trouble with the comfort we ourselves receive from God. I want to minister from the subject, from misery to ministry. From misery to ministry. Let's take a moment and go to God in prayer. Lord, we thank you, Lord. We realize that we can't even walk without you holding our hand. Lord, we need you every moment, every step, every hour. Lord, allow us to trust in you and depend on you like never before. Lord, help us to trust in you more and lean on you more and depend on you more, Lord. For in you, Lord, we have all of our strength. In you, we have all of our peace. In you, we have all the joy we need for this time. Lord, we pray right now that you give us an anointing that makes preaching and teaching easy. Speak, Holy Spirit. Give us all that we need in this moment. Anoint us afresh for your, for to hear your word. In Jesus' name, and all the people of God said, amen. Don't want to be long. This morning we do have our communion celebration and our right hand of fellowship to do this this third Sunday. But for a, few, for a moment, I just want to minister from the idea that God can take you from misery to ministry. Amen. From ministry, uh, from misery to ministry. The idea that God doesn't want you to stay miserable, but that God can turn the things that attempted to make your life miserable and use those things in such a way for you to do great ministry unto the Lord. I have to admit, I have seen God do wonderful things in my uh, 55, 54 years of life. I've seen God uh, do miracles. I've seen God heal the sick. I've seen God turn people's situations around. I've seen God open doors. I've seen folk make several mistakes. And then God gracious and mightily bring them back. Back. I've seen light take folk down, but then God raised them up. I've seen God turn it around when it seemed like there was no way it could be turned around. I've seen God move mountains, make rough places smooth, heal, deliver, set free, and make brand new. I've seen that. I've seen the goodness of God in the land of the living. And even though I've seen the goodness of God in the land of the living, seen God work miracle after miracle, turn things around. None of that has prevented me from experiencing trials and tribulation. None of that has prevented me from having to have some lonely nights and some sleepless nights and some, some, real, some difficult moments. I, I've seen God do miracles, but none of those things have, slow, have prevented me from realizing that if you keep on living, Jesus said to himself, in this life you will have many trials and tribulations, but be of good cheer, for I have overcome the world. That's John 16, uh, 33. The idea that, 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 that he's not saying that you, it's just going to be good cheer. He's saying even though you're going to have trials and tribulation, be of good cheer, because none of those things are going to steal heaven away from you. None of those things can take eternal life from you. When all is said and done, we're going to stand in the winner's circle. When all is said and done, we're going to hear, well done good and faithful servant. When all is said and done, we're going to uh, run this race, finish the court, and there's going to be laid up for us a crown of righteousness. Yeah, but I decided to realize that even though I've seen miracles, I've seen wonderful things, uh, that none of those things have prevented uh, trials and tribulations from coming because trials and tribulations will come, amen, no matter what. With the idea, though, is that God can strengthen us in those trials, turn that situation around, and allow us to use those trials and tribulations, not only to see how God, good God is, but be able to help somebody else walk through that same valley. I'm a witness that God can turn your misery into ministry. Now, uh, I was uh, looking at my computer uh, uh, last night, and I was just scrolling down, and uh, I was looking from this day last year uh, uh, to all the way to, the, uh, to this to year today, um, I've done at least, Kevin, 30 funerals, 30 eulogies. Um, that's not including, that was just for the church. That's not including the ones I did outside the church or had to do for my family. And I, I, I'll admit I am, for, I am acquainted with grief and familiar with suffering. 
May is not always a great month for me. I got two kids. It is, it's a good, I, in some ways, it's a good month. Uh, I got two kids had their birthdays. Uh, I got my an anniversary. Uh, uh, I think two of my children have their wedding anniversaries in, in May as well. May is a, a great month. With regards to anniversaries and birthdays in the Hodge home, but 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 May is also uh, uh, the, the the month that my mother passed away. I never forget it, brother Kevin. I was I was we, we were doing remediation at my school for SOLs. We were helping the kids that had didn't get they get close enough, but they hadn't passed it. They were like a, a question or two away. We were trying to help them get over the hump, and I was working diligently to get these kids over the hump, and I got a call from the office, uh, uh, and, and it was like, Mr. Hodge, can you come to the office? I'm like, I can't come to the office right now. I got work to do. You need these kids. This is pressure. We got to get these kids over the hump. They said, no, we need you to come to, to the office. I stepped in my school at the hallway. It's a long hallway, about as long as this building was, and I stepped out of the classroom. I could see my wife standing all within the hall. Away. And I got to see the secretary stepped out with her. And then the other secretary stepped out next to her. And, then, and uh, at that moment, all the way down the hallway, almost 200 feet away, I knew my mother had left this earth. I rushed down to D.C. And, uh, uh, and, and, and I know what it's like to talk to someone. The next thing you know, they're gone. I remember Wednesday night Bible study, teaching Bible study, and my sister called me. She'll never call me on a Wednesday night. So my sister go to bed at 8 o'clock. My phone rang, and she called me in the middle of the night, and as soon as I saw her number, I knew my father had left this earth. I know what it's like to lose someone close to you. I know what it's like to think you will be able to talk to them on Saturday, and you find out they pass away on Friday. I've experienced it. I know what it's like to lose stuff and to, to lose folk and to have bad situations come in your life. I know what it's like for stuff to come in and steal your joy. I know what it's like to cry and not be able to stop crying. I've seen it, experienced it, been there, done that. Just because you love God doesn't mean you won't experience trials and tribulations. Just because you love God doesn't mean that you won't experience the difficulties of life. Just because you love God, there, 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 there's a myth that folk used to talk about, that if you serve God, trust God, fail God, that, that you'll be able to avoid difficulties and trials and tribulations and hardships and heartache, but that's not true. Jesus said, in this life you'll have many trials and tribulations, but be of good cheer, for God has overcome the world. I know what it's like, but I also know what it's like for God to strengthen your heart. I also know what it's like for God to lift you when you didn't think you could be lifted. I also know what it's like for God to renew and restore your joy. I also know what it's like for God to wipe your tears and put a smile back on your face. I also know, I know what it's like to be down, but I also know that God can lift you up and renew you. Uh, here in the text, the Apostle Paul is writing what we feel is his second, at least his second letter to the, the church in Corinth. And, and there have been some questions about Paul. Paul had gone through some stuff. He kept getting locked up. People kept on trying to kill him. He kept finding himself on shipwreck after shipwreck. Paul kept going through stuff. And the word was in the Corinthian church that Paul must not know the Lord. Paul must not be a true apostle. Paul must not be anointed of God. Paul must not have the favor of God on his life. How could Paul have the favor of God on his life and go keep going through trouble and trial and tribulation? Paul keeps getting stuff, bad stuff keeps happening. Paul, Paul must not be anointed. Paul must not be God's chosen for that moment in time. Paul must not really be an apostle. And the apostle Paul has to, has to clarify some misconceptions. He has to clarify some stuff. He's got, he's got to say, now, 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 just because, just because I, I've gone through something doesn't mean that God's hand wasn't on my life. Doesn't mean that God wasn't having to call me and anointed me. I know that's what you think. That's going to be a theme you see in 2 Corinthians that there are some people that assume that if you know the Lord, you can dance around trouble. If you know the Lord, you, uh, 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 bad news won't find your address. Paul said, no, that, that, that's, not, that's not the case. 
that's not the case. I, I, I know what it's like to have, I, Paul, I know some other apostles have died. I know, I know some, some good friends of mine that were in ministry together, we, they died. I, I, I know what it's like to lose everything and for, for, for folk to hate you and run you out of town. Paul had gone through some stuff, but didn't mean that God, his hand was not on his life. And I think we, sometimes we get confused. We wonder, why is stuff happening to me? Why, why, why am I going through? Why am I experiencing this? At one point in time, Paul may have had that perspective. He may have wondered why he had to go through. He may have wondered why if things weren't always working his way and how sometimes stuff was tough and sometimes stuff was real hard. Paul may have wondered that at one point in time. But now, as he looks back over his life, he said, oh, it had a good reason. And, and I, I understand some stuff now. I, I, see, because sometimes, in the, you know, we don't always understand why we're going through. We don't always see why we had to go through this and don't always experience it when, when the tears are coming, when, 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 when you can't stop crying, when, when it seems like it's not going to get better. In those moments, it's hard to see your way past it. It's hard to see how you're going to get through it. It's hard to see how it can ever get better. And Paul probably at one point in time understood that, but now he lived a little bit. He's walked with God a little bit, and he's learned some stuff. Then right. now he wants to tell. He said, I know y'all think that I don't know God. I know you think that, that I'm not anointed, but let me just, let me give you some insight on what I've learned. He said, he said verse 3, as he writes this letter, he said, Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of compassion and the God of all comfort. Uh, Paul, Paul says, the first thing I need you to understand is that what I've learned in my miserable moments, what I learned in my misery is that I can always go to God. God had, look, he said, he is the God of all comfort. Whatever I needed, God could supply. Wherever I was weak, God could give me strength. Wherever there were tears, God could wipe my tears away. Wherever there was, where there was weakness, God could renew my strength. Everywhere I needed comfort, I found out that if I go to the Lord, I found out that if I run to him, I found out that if I put my trust in him, I found out if I cry out to God, I found out if I lift my hands to the Lord and say, Lord, come see about me every time. Time. All right. All right. He's the God of all comfort. He says the father of compassion. The idea is that, that he's the originator of compassion. There's, what he's saying, there's nobody that cares for you like God cares for you. All right. All right. And then there's no God that will comfort you. He said he is the God of all comfort. Sister Hodge, initially when I was looking at that word comfort, in my mind a lot of times comfort just means somebody, uh, Kevin coming and patting you on the back and giving you a hug and letting you know everything's going to be all right. They're trying to comfort you. But, that, but this word is a little different, Sister Cheatham. This word, this, word, this word comfort here in this text, it's a little different. It, 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 it means to help. It, it, it's the idea, you know, if you, if say you're at the gym and you're on the bench press, uh, uh, Brother McCall, and you're trying to press that 225 and, and get that, that, that press that, that weight up, and, and, and somehow you're not able to do it. And, and, and you can't get it up back on the bar, and it's about to crush down on your chest. Somebody comes along and helps you. They didn't take the burden off you, but they provided enough strength. to get it through. Here, here, here is the idea in this. He said, God of all comfort. This word comfort means it's, a, it's help. It's the word we, in the Greek, parakletos. They say, it's the same word all the time used for uh, when Jesus said, I'm going to send the helper, the Holy Spirit. I'm going to send you divine strength to help you carry the load that you're dealing with. Here, he said, Paul said, God is a God of all comfort. What is he saying? God will give you the strength you need, not always to take it off of you, but to be able to help you lift what you're trying to carry. It means that I couldn't carry it on myself. I couldn't carry it by myself, but God will give me the necessary strength. Amen. Y'all not hearing what I'm talking about. I, I found out God doesn't always take it away. See, a, a person who's really spotting you well, 
I learned this. My, my friend Darrell, he goes, oh man, he be bench pressing, uh, uh, bench pressing 450 pounds. He, he just got one of his degrees the other day. My, my friend Darrell, and, and Darrell, he, he, he would just show you, he said, now a good spotter is not going to take all the way off you. They just going to come in there and they, because they want you, because you, watch it, you don't get stronger when all the weight is taken off of you. But what he did was he would provide enough help so that I could push it back up. Okay, this is this, this, this a shot right here for you. God don't always take it away. But if you call on him, if you call on him, he'll help you hold it. He'll help you push it to where it's got to be. If you call on him, he'll provide the necessary help. He's a God of all comfort. And what Paul is saying is, he didn't take me out of the shipwreck, but he sent a piece floating by. That when I could, you got to read the book of Acts, it talks about it. In the book of the last chapter, Acts, Paul gets shipwrecked there. He makes it to the shore on broken pieces. He didn't, look, the ship had broken apart, but, but just when Paul couldn't swim any longer, God sends a piece of boat. It ain't the whole boat, but it's enough to get him to shore. Beloved, y'all don't hear what I'm talking about. You may not always have all of it taken off you, but God will. Supply the strength that you need. He's the God of all comfort. I mean, he's the God of all strength, all help. Just with him, but he doesn't all, because he, if, if, if he took all the weight off of you, the next time you got under that weight, you couldn't push any. Do you realize what God is trying to do? God, like Sister Howard said, God is trying to strengthen you. And the only way you get strengthened is if he lets you have some of the weight. Because why should you, watch this, have to go through it again and not be stronger the second time? If I know you're going to have to go through trial and then another trial and then another trial and then another trial, it's no need for you to be as weak on the first trial on the third trial, excuse me, as you were on the first. It don't make any sense. What's the point when you can get stronger? Mm. So Paul says, he said, I know here, I know y'all didn't think, I know y'all thinking, he's telling the that I'm not anointed. No, God is just getting me stronger. He's a God of all compassion, all comfort, and he's giving me the help I need now that as I go through, I'm not as weak as I used to be. I'm way stronger than what I used to be. Amen. And now, let me tell you why God has to get you stronger. Look what he said. I like it. He says he is the God of all comfort. Everybody say all comfort. But then he also said, now, he's, he's the God of all comfort. Look, I like that. Who comforts us in all our trouble. We got that. He's got all comfort for all trouble. What do you mean? That means there's not any kind of trouble you'll get in where he doesn't have comfort that matches up with it. Watch this. There's not any kind of trouble you'll get in that God doesn't have help for that kind of trouble. Uh, me and my wife on the way on the way here to church, we were listening to old uh, Donald Vale song uh, called "God Specializes." Y'all not here? Not. This is the idea. This is the idea that God has special help for your new unique kind of trouble. That means there's no trouble you can get into that God doesn't already have. A tool, help for that situation. You're not the first person to go through it. God is going to bring you through it just like he brought somebody else through it. I like that. No matter what trouble you get into, Paul said, I found him to be a friend that can help you in any trouble. I was shipwrecked. He was a broken piece. I, they tried to stone me. He was an escape route. Amen. They tried to beat me up. He, I, he gave me strength. Uh, anytime I needed it, God specialized the help just for me. That's, that's good news. That's good news. That means there's no trouble you'll get into. Watch. There's no trouble that you'll get into. There's no trouble you'll get into. There's no mess you don't get into that God hasn't already prepared strength whoo, and help just for that time of need. Amen. That's, that's, how, that's how good God is. Paul said, I've learned this. 
I've learned this. Now, he says, now the reason I've gone through it, and I found him to be a friend. I found out he specializes. I found out he's given me strength. See, well, I love this part. I love this part. He says this, verse 4, so that we can comfort those in any trouble with the comfort we ourselves receive from God. Because it says in verse 8, he said, I went through all of this stuff. So that, he says, so I could, see that, but this happened, that we may not rely on ourselves, but on God. And then he qualifies it, who raises the dead. Now he put that raises the dead part in there to let you know there ain't nothing he can't do. He couldn't go, he couldn't go through the list about all of what, all the things that God did. He just said, well, let me just say it like that. He can raise the dead. So we don't know what situation you're going through. He can raise the dead. It may mean no matter what situation, he can do it. I, 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 Paul, I ain't got time to write no long, lengthy letter about all the things God can do. Let me just put it like this. They, they said nobody can take death away. Nobody can defeat death, but he did it. So, yeah, he can take care of anything else in your life. He can fix anything in your situation. He's able. He said all of this was so that we could learn how to trust God. Now, I not only, look, I not only have gone through all these trials so that I can learn to trust God. So that I can learn to believe. So that I can have hope in the midst of it. But I've, the Lord said, the Paul said, I've gone through this. So that we, or us, that have gone through this can be able to comfort y'all who are going to go through it. We're going to comfort you with the same. So what does Paul say? God gave us help so that we can help you. We went through this misery so that we might be able to minister to you. So what does that mean, Pastor? Watch this, watch this, watch this. The, deal, the thing that you're going through right now, God's going to use you to help somebody else walk through it. Okay, you say, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. You say, watch this. You're dealing with loss of a job. God is giving you strength right now to trust him in the midst. He will bless you because he can raise the dead. So he will bless you. He will turn it around. In the middle of that, you're learning to trust God until he does. Now, he's going he's to take you through. You're going to go through the trial and tribulation. You're going to come through it. Amen. God's going to bring you out of it. Praise God. He's going to take you out of it. He's going to turn it around. He's going to deliver you. But he doesn't just do it so that you can get delivered. He doesn't just do it so you can have a smile back on your face. He doesn't just do it so there's money back in your bank account. He does it so when somebody else is going through. You then now can be the hands of God, the instrument of God, the voice of God, the comfort of God, the hug of God, and say, baby, I'm going to walk with you through this. I'm going to help you get through this. I'm going to encourage you. I'm going to strengthen you. I'm not going to let you get discouraged. I'm not going to let you. I'm going to stay with you. It may be tough, but we're going to get through this together. It may be some long night, but we're going to stay with you. I'm going to now comfort you with the same comfort that I have received. Watch this. God's taking you through that misery so that you might be able to minister to somebody that's going to go through the same thing you're going through. I learned a long time ago that if I'm going through it, God is going to use me to help somebody else get through when all is said and done. So I said, Lord, Lord, I got to figure out, Lord, how, what do I need to do? What are you trying to teach me? What are you trying to show me? Lord, I, I understand. He said, what do you do when your heart is broken? What, what do you do when you, when you lost everything? What do you do? You got to trust God, believe God, and just wait in there and let God comfort you because he is the God of all comfort. It may take a week. It may take a month. It may take two, three years. It may take five years. But I'm here to let you know God will get you through it. But then when God gets you through it, that's you got to understand God's going to place somebody around you, somebody near you that you're going to be able to lift up and help God. Look, and you got to understand he will turn your misery into ministry. Paul said this was all but so that we might be able to comfort y'all. This was all so that we might be able to encourage you. This was all so that we might be able to trust God ourselves, but also encourage you to be able to trust God for yourself. He said, I'm going to turn all, Paul said, God turned all the misery we went through into ministry. He turned all the misery that we went through into a way to be able to bless somebody else. Oh, here, that's, that's, that's the point. That's the goal that God gives us comfort in all of our trouble. So we might be able to comfort someone as they go through their trouble. See, God doesn't do it. You know, we are all connected. 
we're not separate. We are, we are, we are collected. We are a body, amen. And so that's, I, I, I give God praise for, because when we do funerals here, I praise God for all the people that volunteer and serve on those days. And sometimes, like last year, to serve three days that week, but they come, and I like that because they're taking off a burden off of a family. They're coming, they, they've been on that other side, and they're there to make sure that the repast is ready, make sure that the chicken is hot, amen, make sure that the green beans is ready, make sure that the bulletins are done. They, they come in there to support people and family during that time because that, those, that's what happens when you've been on the other side. When you've been, you know that what it means to step up and help a family be a blessing to another family because God wants us to take all the misery we went through and use it for ministry. How God brought us out, how God comforted us, how God taught us. Those are the things that we now bless somebody with to help them get stronger and help them walk that journey that they may have to go through. Let me pray for you. Heavenly Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you, Lord, that you can turn all the misery in our life into ministry. We thank you, Lord, that you are teaching us now to trust in you, that you are providing us with the strength that we need. You're not, you're not taking all of the load off us, but you, you're, taking, you're taking just enough that we can push it forward. So I pray, Lord, you help someone under the sound of my voice who is struggling. Help somebody under the sound of my voice who's weary. Help somebody under the sound of my voice who's really uh, just, just broken down. Lord, let them know that you're giving them strength right now. Let them know, Lord, that you're renewing their strength right now. Lord, lift up their heads, Lord. Lord, dry their eyes, Lord. Give them the power that they need to keep on pressing forward. And Lord, let them know eventually you're going to turn all of that misery into ministry. Now, Lord, I thank you, God, for what you're doing. Now, Lord, bless this church. Bless us, Lord. There's someone under the sound of my voice who does not know you, Lord. Let this be a moment in time where they put, turn their lives over to you, where they begin to trust you, where they begin to seek your will, seek your way. Lord, I thank you, Lord, for what you're doing in our congregation. Speak to someone's heart this morning. In Jesus' name, and all the people of God said amen. Amen. Would you stand for our invitation? I'm going to ask that our, any uh, ministers and deacons and deaconesses that are coming, come forward so that we can prepare for anyone that's joining this morning. If you're here today and you don't know the Lord is your Savior, God can turn your life around, change your life, make you brand new, save your soul. If there's someone on the side of my voice that has never accepted Christ as your Savior, you're ready, come right now. If there's someone you know the Lord, but you you don't have a church home right now, you're in between church fellowships and a and you're ready to join this church. Come right now. As the men sing, come. While on others thou art calling Do not pass me by I'm crying Savior Savior Hear my As we prepare for our right hand of fellowship and our church covenant. We prayed last, we prayed the other week for a young man, the amen to, uh, he was going to the rookie training camp, rookie training camp uh, with the uh, LA Chargers. I said Las Vegas, it's LA Chargers. And I'm glad to know that Chris did sign that NFL contract the other day, amen. And, uh, that's Reverend Collins' grandson. Now, 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 now when he makes it the full roster, we're going, to be, we, we're going to find it. You know, as soon as they're playing close, we figured out they're going to be in Charlotte. So we're going to go to Charlotte, amen. So praise God for that. But I want to just give you an update. That, uh, that's some good news. Praise God. We're excited about that. Uh, second, but God has been blessing us real good. It's time for us to do our church covenant. Our church covenant is a reminder of our covenant with God, but also our covenant with one another. We're going to read our, our church covenant. Before we do that, we want to do the right hand of fellowship. Let's do the right hand of fellowship. And so as you can maybe be seated we're going to, for this moment. We'll do this real quick. almost forgot, <laughs> so I didn't want to forget. Let's see, if you are, I'm going to ask to come on down. Uh, Richard and Felicia Carter, their family, Chevelle Johnson, Shania Johnson, Maya Carter, Rosalind Carter, ask them to come, and uh, they're here. <laughs> Brother Jacob Johnson, is, is Brother Jacob's here, I want him to come. Brother Kenneth Lane, if Kenneth is here, come on down. Also, 
Uh, Malik Scipio. Malik is here. All right. Come on down. Yeah, come on down. All righty. If, Kay- if Kaylin is here, send that Kaylin Brock. If she's here, come on down. Second, but let's give God some praise for all our new members. Second, huh? Montreal, where's Montreal? Is Montreal here? Come on, Montreal, yeah. Come on, give God some praise. There's Kaylin. Hey, there you are, Kaylin. Come on. Praise God. Second bat. Look at all of our newest members. I can't even get around them. <laughs> praise God. Kaylin, come on. Yeah, come on down. The chords ain't long enough. You get around them. Praise God. To all our new members, we're thankful and grateful that you're part of our fellowship. It is our prayer that God will bless you real good. Our goal is to stand with you, to encourage you, to strengthen you as you grow in God, and that God will bless you real good. We're going to be here for you. Through the great times and any time there may be a challenge, we're going to stand beside you. And in the scriptures, when they talk about the right hand, that's a symbol of friendship and partnership. And so when the church gives you the right hand, what they're saying is we're partnering with you in ministry, partnering with you as you grow in the Lord. Be partners in this thing. We're part of a body of Christ, and we're here to support you, and you're part of us, and we love you. And so second Baptist, I'm going to ask that our, our church officers come. They're going to represent the entire church to give you the right hand of fellowship. As they're doing the right hand, does anyone that did not get a communion packet raise your hand? The ushers will give you a communion packet. Does anyone that didn't receive one? Second Baptist, let's uh, prepare to stand for the reading of our church covenant. They're going to put the church covenant up on the screen. We ask all of our newest members to sit on that front row. Let us stand now as we prepare for our reading. I didn't realize we had so many. I probably should have done the right hand at the end. (laughs) 
But at the end of the service, I will ask that those who get in right hand to come back so any other members want to come and recognize you today. Let us read together. Have him in led, as we believe, by the Spirit of God, to release see the Lord Jesus Christ as our Savior. And on the profession of our faith, have been baptized in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, we do now in the presence of God, angels in this assembly, most solemnly and joyfully enter the covenant with one another as one body in Christ. We engage, therefore, by the aid of the Holy Spirit to walk together in Christian love, to strive for the advancement of this church in knowledge, holiness, and comfort, to promote its worship, prosperity, and spirituality, to sustain its ordinances, disciplines, and doctrines, to contribute cheerfully and regularly to the support of the ministry, the expenses of the church, the relief of the poor, and the spread of the gospel through all nations. Engaged to maintain family and secret devotions, to religiously educate our children, to seek the salvation of our kindred and acquaintances, to walk circumspectly in the world, to be just in our dealings, faithful in our engagement, and exemplary in our involvement, to avoid all tattling, backbiting, and excessive anger, to abstain from the secret sale and excessive use of intoxicating drinks as a beverage, seek God's help in abstaining from all practices which bring unwarranted harm to the body or jeopardize our own or others' faith and to be zealous in our efforts to advance the kingdom of our Savior, we further engage to watch over one another in brotherly love, to remember each other in prayer, to aid each other in sickness and distress, to cultivate Christian sympathy and feeling and courtesy and speech. Take offense, but always ready for reconciliation and mindful of the rules of our Savior. We moreover engage then we move from this place, we will as soon as possible unite with some other church where we can carry out the spirit of this covenant and the principles of God's word. And now unto him who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, be power and glory forever. Amen. You may be seated. For us on third Sundays, it's a special Sunday where we pause to remember the sacrifice of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who died so that we might have eternal life, a demonstration of the greatest love that there is, a love that sacrifices and a love that gives of itself. And so we come to the table to be reminded of the sacrifice of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. On the night that he was betrayed, before he would go to the cross, they had the Passover meal, and at that meal there's wine and bread. He broke that bread to break off and give peace and said, this is my body that will be broken for you. When he poured the wine, he said, this is my blood that will be spilled for you. They did not understand what he meant at that moment. But he meant that he was the bread of life and his, that he would die for them. That his blood would be that new wine that cleanses us. And so we take symbolic bread and symbolic wine. Remember how his body was broken so that we might be whole. Because by his stripes we are healed. And also how his blood has cleansed us and washed us from our sins. It paid the ultimate price so that we might have eternal life. So let us pray. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, we come to your table this morning, Lord, to remember what you did on the cross for us, how you was broken and bruised for our sins and our transgression. But Lord, three days later, you rose again, reminding us that we have the hope that you will return for us. So Lord, as we prepare our hearts and our minds, Lord, if we're not right, we pray that you would just take whatever is not within us that is like, not like you, Take it away and fill us with your love and your grace and your mercy. Lord, we pray that this bread and this juice, Lord, will remind us how we were once lost in sin, but now are found. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Let us eat and drink together. Let the church say amen. Amen. Let us stand as we prepare for the benediction. And after the benediction, I want to ask that our, those getting that right hand, who got the right hand of fellowship, we're standing in front. If anyone else wants to come in and welcome in the Second Baptist Church, feel free to come at that moment. Let's stand. And may the peace of God, the grace of God, the mercy of God, and the favor of God be with you now and forevermore. Lord, strengthen us for your work. Lord, we thank you, Lord, for the help that you're sending our way. Lord, you'll give us just enough help to be strong in you. We thank you, Lord, for your ever, your grace, your, your love and care. Lord, strengthen us for the journey. Strengthen us to carry the weights that we might have to carry. In Jesus' name, and all the people of God said, amen. God bless you. Go in peace. Come on up front. Greet our newest members. <laughs>